Hello, beautiful one. I'm so happy that you are here with me um, in Culture Kids. And today we have uh, this country called Sierra Leone. Can you say after me, Sierra Leone? Yes, Sierra Leone uh, is a, a country that it is uh, in West Africa. And we have amazing things. Uh, ready for you a, and a beautiful book a little bit sad but a beautiful book that will let you have an idea more about this this country in west africa but before we get started i would like to acknowledge that we are located on the kamloops equipment territory within the traditional and unceded lands of the equipment nation and a beautiful day here at the Campbell's Museum and I'm really excited that you are joining us. So as you heard Sierra Leone is in West Africa and if you live there, maybe if you lived in the city in Freetown, uh, you might have a house made out of wood but if you were in the villages, if you weren't in the main city, you would probably live in a house made out of sticks and mud as you will see in the book that we are going to read. And do you know what Sierra Leone means? It means Lion Mountains. And uh, the languages that are spoken are many, and actually English is the official language. But most people in Sierra Leone speak Creole. There's also other languages like Mende and Temne, but Creole is the most is spoken. 97% of the population speaks Creole. And we are going to say hello in Creole today. And the way they say hello is Kushé. Can you say that? Kushé. So let's say Kushé with our song. Ready? Hello, hello, Kushé. Hello, hello, Kushé. You can say it once, you can say it again. It's as easy to say as counting to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, hello, Kushé. And um, rice is the most important food in uh, Sierra Leone. And most people there are farmers. And do you know what animals you can find in Sierra Leone? You can find hippopotamus, African leopards, African elephants, and chimpanzees. How awesome is that, the animals that they have in there? And um, if you are ready, I would love to tell you this story. So if you would like to prepare for that, let's rub our hands to open all our channels of perception and you're gonna start to feel a little bit of warmth in them so imagine that you have like a light this energy this light that you are going to take to close to your eyes without touching them just put them a little bit above them and you can feel that warmth going through your eyes and when you're ready just open your eyes and let's also take three deep breaths just so we are nice and calm for our stories. If you want to go with me, very deep breath. The way up, down. And one more. Don't you feel much better? Deep breathing always makes us feel better. And if you are ready, let's. Take a look to our story. Look at our, to our fantastic book. It is called The Water Princess, and it is written by Susan Verde and illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds, and is based on the childhood experience of Georgie Badillo. And here we go. The Water Princess. I am Princess Gigi. My kingdom, the African sky, 
so wide and so close. I can almost touch the sharp edges of the stars. I can tame the wild dogs with my song. I can make the tall grass sway when I dance. I can make the wind play high and hide and seek. But I cannot make the water come closer. I cannot make the water run clearer, no matter what I command. It is early morning still dark. My mother wakes me. Gigi, my princess, it is time to get up. We must collect the water. Water, come! Do not make me wake before even the sun is out of bed, I demand. Come, please, I say. But the water won't listen and I know we will have to walk so far to the well. She's tired. I am too sleepy to put on my crown. I think of the pot that will rest on my breath instead. The thirst come quick. Dry lips, dry throat. I squeeze my eyes shut. I see it clear. I dip my toes in it. Cool, I scoop it up and bring it to my lips. Slowly, I open my eyes. Nothing. I kick the dust. I grab my empty pot and place it upon my head. My mother does the same and our journey begins full of song. My maman adds her melody. Our steps are light. We twirl and laugh together. The miles gives us room to dance. Halfway there, we stop for a moment at the giant carroty tree, long enough to grab a handful of sweet she nuts for energy. We can keep the dance going just a little longer. Maman, are we there yet? Finally, I hear the water running from the well, the giggles of my friends, the chatter of women. Some have traveled farther than I, only to return home when the sun has gone to bed. Maman holds our place while I play with friends. The dance continues. The water is flowing. Pots filling with the dusty earth color liquid. Gigi, come, maintenant. My turn now. The dance home has load to careful steps. My thirst so heavy, like the full pot I carry. Our song is softer now. Our shoulders ache, our feet cramp. I see home at last. Maman boils enough water for drinking. We wait. We wash our clothes. We prepare food for cooking. My father comes quickly from the fields to share in the drink and the meal. The scoops, he scoops me up. My princess, you have returned with the water. Drink, Maman says, finally. Every sip fills me with energy. I want to make it last, but I can't. I gulp it down. Clothes and body clean. I sing to the dogs. I dance with the tall grass. I hide from the wind. Maman brings, on, brings one last cup she has saved just for me. Drink, my princess. 
sleep, my princess. Tomorrow we journey again. Maman, I say as I close my eyes, why is the water so far? Why is the water not clear? Where is our water? Sleep, she says. Dream, she says. Someday you will find a way, my princess. Someday. I am Princess Gigi. My kingdom, the African sky, the dusty earth, and someday the flowing, cool, crystal clear water. Someday. The end. That was a very sad story, right? It is difficult to think that there are children like Gigi that don't have water available and that makes me think how grateful and I really think to be in Canada where we have water and we have food and everything we, we need around us. But uh, talking about other more cheerful things is the crafts that we are going to do from Sierra Leone. And you can see this amazing flag that we have here. And we have the color green at the top and the blue at the bottom. And you have also with you your bag in here. So let's see what goodies we have in here. So we have the paper for our flag. We have some blue and then crayons. Are you having fun taking everything out of your bag? And then we have this stick for when we finish our craft. And more crayons for you to color. This a uh, sheet from Sierra Leone, and we have our flag in here. And why don't we color that together? And maybe you at home can keep coloring these people with the traditional costumes from Sierra Leone. That way, you can see how uh, sometimes they wear that uh, traditional cons uh, costume. So let's do that. So we are going to start by the top with our um, green crayon and once you are done your green let's go with the blue And ta -da! Then we have our flag all colored. And uh, this, uh, this gives you also the information that 6.5 million people live in Sierra Leone. And now that we have uh, done our flag in there, why don't we work in our big flag? So you can show everyone that you know now how the flag from Sierra Leone looks. So we get that, and maybe I will start by putting some glue in the back. Maybe I can just put some glue in my container. Hope you are reusing, you know, your yogurt containers or those small ones, so you can use it for uh, paint or glue. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that glue in the corner of my, the edge of my cardboard. Then I'm going to put the stick in there and I'm just going to, maybe your mom or dad can help you with that. I'm just going to make a little fold in there so it can hold the, the stick in there. So now it is ready to go. Maybe it needs to dry a little bit more.
but as you can see, the flag has those three colors. So we just have to do kind of a big stripe in green and big stripe in blue. And you will have your, your tissue paper here. And let's just cut a, stri a stripe in here. And maybe we can cut some more if we need more, right? But maybe we don't need that much and you can uh, save that uh, leftover tissue paper for another craft that you have in mind. Do you remember what Sierra Leone means? What the name of Sierra Leone means? It means Lion Mountains. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue away these pieces of tissue paper starting with my green at the top. Remember Sierra Leone's flag has green at the top. Then I'm gonna start gluing these green tissue paper. You decide how to do it. You can glue the whole thing or you can even go with your fingers like this and great little balls. I think I'm gonna go with my flat square so I can finish in good time. Do you remember the animals that they have in Sierra Leone? They have hippopotamus, chimpanzees, African bush elephants, and Africa, African leopards. Hope you're having fun creating this flag. Am I also hoping that one day things are easier for people in Sierra Leone? That they get to have some easier access to water. But you know what I really like to see? That Gigi, even with her difficult circumstances, she was so positive and she loved to dance. How amazing is that? So I am done the first part of my flag. And oops, it moved a little bit, so I'm gonna put another square in there. And then I'm gonna leave it empty because then the other part, because it's the white in the flag, and then at the very bottom is the blue. I'm gonna try to go about the same uh, height than uh, the green with my blue now. And for that I will need to cut, oh you see we have plenty of paper. And I cut just some of that. If I need more, then I cut some more. But we try to be as eco-friendly as we want. We try not to waste any paper. Paper that you have over, as I was saying, you can create amazing things with that. So do you remember the languages that are spoken in Sierra Leone? Well, the official language is English. 
your language. But uh, Creole, it is spoken widely, 97% of the population know it, and it actually uh, has a lot of English in it, so many words do sound the same and sound kind of like English. It's a mix of other languages too. Do you remember how we said hello? Was couché. That's right. And you will decide how much paper you want to put in there. I just noticed that I went and I left the white. It's, it's too much, so I'm going to put a little bit more in both with both colors. So more paper, so it is kind of the same. Eh with the three colors showing as the flag is. So we try our best. Same time we're always kind with the outcome. As long as you're doing your best, it's all good. Now I'm going to go back to the blue. And then you have your coloring sheet in there. So you can see, remind yourself of how much of each color it has to have. I will need just a tiny more of blue. Look, with that, I'm done. I will have to wait for the stick to dry so I can play with my flag all around. And I really hope you enjoy creating this flag from Sierra Leone and that you enjoy your time with me as I am enjoying to be with you and uh, this is our time to say goodbye but why don't we say goodbye in Creole as well and the way uh, they say and it sounds a little bit like English you will say you will see it is a uh, day go that means I will go Ah, they go. That's the way they say goodbye. So should we try to sing that? Goodbye, goodbye. Ah, they go. Goodbye, goodbye. Ah, they go. You can say it once. You can say it again. It's as easy to say as counting to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Goodbye, goodbye. Ah, they go. Have a wonderful day and hope to see you for our next country. <laughs> Bye.